This session we're going to talk about the economics of wisdom. Yes, wisdom has economics. And you can see there from other classes, we've already discussed that wise is defined as skillful. And wisdom is distinct in that it goes on to be about character. And we said it's the principal thing. So therefore, in all thy getting, get wisdom. Principle is first, beginning, original, cheap, and authorized, absolute. That sounds like something that might be on the test. <laughs> I'm just guessing. And no, I trick you every now and then, so. But I want to start off, I didn't put this whole 12 verses on your sheet because uh, it's so long. But I want you to uh, maybe jot down a couple of notes that come to you while I read uh, these 12 verses because we're going to kind of pick it apart about the 10 virgins mm. and talking about the economics of wisdom. Starting at verse 1 of Matthew 25, if you want to jot that in your notes, reading verses 1 to 12, <clears throat> then shall the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of what? Heaven. The kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. So note, here he's likening the kingdom of heaven to ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise. And five of them were what? <laughs> foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. In other words, all they had was the oil in their lamp. Probably leftover oil. <laughs> uh, you never see that marketed, do you? Get your leftover oil. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but the wise, everybody say wise. The wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Very important. They took their oil in their vessels, or another word for it is flask, where you could have oil. Hello there. Hi. My honey is here. Hi. <laughs> and by the way, that's my wife, for those of you who don't know who I'm talking about. Okay. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. So the foolish took no oil except what was in their lamp from previous. But then it says... But the wise took oil in their vessels or a flask that they carried alongside of them with their lamp. Important. While the bridegroom tarried. In other words, he didn't come when they thought he would. They all slumbered and slept. Now notice, not only did the foolish sleep, but the wise did too. Mm -hmm. The only difference was five of them were prepared. Five were foolish and five were wise. So important. <laughs> so it says that they slumbered and slept and at midnight there was a cry or a sound made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now in this case, you need to know the virgins were like bridesmaids. So in this custom that he's referring to, he's giving as an example, these virgins would await to escort the bridegroom into the chamber. So that was their job. That was their uh, particular purpose in this whole scenario. Are we good so far? Yes. So I don't know if you knew that or not, but that, that helps to know that was custom. Okay, then it says, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And then all those virgins arose and what? Trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil for our lamps. Give us of your oil for our lamps. Because they have gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for you, for us and you, 
but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Now it kind of sounds like, but really it's only how it sounds, like the five wise were stingy. But they were not being stingy. They were being wise. And they gave their reason. Lest we give you oil because of your lack of preparation and we run out who were prepared. Can I just ask you to write this? Be careful what you say yes to. And be careful who you say yes to. You may be giving away something that they didn't even bother to prepare for. Be careful who you say yes to and what you say yes to. You may think, well, I ought to be willing to help. But I'm telling you, sometimes the best way you can help some people is to say no. That's right. Or else you might become, are you ready for this? An enabler. <laughs> Never heard that word before, right? Wow. Amen. So, I see Vi said she's on her way, and here she is. All right. That's called real time, folks. <laughs> All right. So, now there's more. I want to read more. Are we good so far? Yes, sir. So, they said, not so, lest there not be enough for us and you, but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. Now, what are we talking about tonight? The economics of wisdom. We'll see how this fits. But it says the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. shut. Mm, I know what's coming, folks. And so I'm excited. Afterwards, everybody say afterwards. Afterwards. Came the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord. Open to us. <laughs> Lord, Lord. No, I didn't do that. Anyway, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, what? I know you not. Wow. I don't know you. Now let's look at this. I want you to know that a lot of times, and some scholars, but a lot of times for these scriptures about the virgins, you immediately hear messages about the second coming. Yeah. Or you'll hear messages about a rapture. Yeah. Or you'll hear messages about this and about that concerning, is, are the virgins the church? Or are they, you know, the bridesmaids of the church? And is, But I, can I give you an honest assessment? Yeah. This is not about that. Look at what it says on your sheet here. I put it on your sheet so you could remember it. This is not focused on Jesus' return. But it said in the beginning what it's focused on. It's focused on the kingdom of heaven. Yes, yes, yep. that's right. All about God's business. Yeah. In other words, it's not about someday in the sweet by and by. It's talking about are your lamps ready now? Yep. Be prepared. Because now we're talking about how the kingdom operates now. Really, this is the economics. Who is this, honey? I'm sorry. Hola. Oh, I. Uh, so I don't know which. Stop. I mean, do you want me to choose something? Yeah. Can you? See them right now. I don't know what to do. Which uh, Hi, folks out there. <laughs> just a second. Uh, I don't know what she's talking about. But just tell her to go to my page. She wants to get in on class. Send me a link to the class. Yeah. What I found is all you Okay, just right. tell her to go to my Facebook page. Your Facebook. Yeah. Anyway, another student wanting to come on. So where were we? You say it was all about God's business. It's, it's all about the, the kingdom. The lamps. They need to be ready now. Is that right? Yes. Would you all agree? Absolutely. Because isn't that way, the way it started? Yes. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be like. He didn't say, now this is how the second coming will be like. He said, this is, this is how the kingdom of heaven is like. And it goes into economics. Yep. Wow. So, God's household. He says, the kingdom of heaven is like. 
Because if you want to write, you probably know this already from my other classes, but the kingdom of heaven is his realm. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is his rule. The kingdom of God is his rule. When you read that in the scripture, the kingdom of God is his rule. And the kingdom of heaven, when scripture refers to that, is his realm. And so here it speaks in the beginning of the scripture we read tonight about the kingdom of heaven. And it likens it to the economics of ten virgins. Can you say one more time, Doctor? The kingdom of God is his rule, mm -hmm. and the kingdom of heaven is his realm. Got it, thank you. He rules from a realm. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. All right, now, so God's household is like, the kingdom of heaven is like. So he's referring to something concerning economics because the word household is a Greek word, okonomia. Or we get our word, and you've heard me say this in other classes, economy. economy. So it's really about the economics of wisdom. Economics is okonomia, and it's not about money first. It's about much more. more than Amen. Amen. We're going to find out. Economics involves, and we're going to go back to the virgins in a minute. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the wings is the virgins. <laughs> we'll pick them back up again here soon. But economics in the scriptures refers to management. Five of the virgins were poor managers and five were kingdom managers. It's also about stewardship. Whenever you see the word economia or household, it's referring to stewardship. And you can see that clearly in the story of the 10 virgins. Now also, right now, well, you've got it on your sheet there. It's also about governmental order. Governmental order. Notice the bridegroom said to the virgins, I never knew you. I don't know you. You know why? Because they were out of order. They didn't follow protocol. They didn't listen. They didn't listen. Because God's order is not legalistic, but it's relational. Yes. And legal. Amen. Amen. So it's the governmental order of God's household. This is, uh, you know, I prayed all day, I, honestly. I don't even know for sure. I, I put these things down on paper. How many of you like fresh stuff? Yes. Oh, yeah. And I'm telling you, while I was putting this on paper today, God said, you're going to have to wait to hear what I'm going to say tonight. So I don't even know for sure what's going to come through. Because already some things came through I didn't plan on. <laughs> and so uh, I, I pray this is clear tonight. Amen. How many of you Amen. praying for me tonight? Amen. I want to be a vessel that he can use. Amen. So remember, remember, they went into the house and shut the door. So when the door is shut, that means the time has passed. Yep. That's the order to why the bridegroom had to say, I know you not. I only know you by keeping the economics uh, and the order of what I'm about. Remember we said last week, knowing is not just intellect, right? Yes. But knowing is also intercourse. So while he's not talking about physical intercourse here, he's talking about, I did not have any intimate, intimate thoughts with you. Oh, come on, somebody. Because you didn't allow me because you were not prepared. You went with the economics of your own mind instead of the economics of the kingdom and wisdom. Whew. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to slow down because there's too much coming through here. I mean, here. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. Can we just praise God for a minute? How many of you think, well, God is, is revealing secrets to us? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So wisdom has economics. It's about management, stewardship, governmental order of God's household. Again, it's not legalistic, but it's relational and legal. Yes. Very important. So it says, you know this, no doubt very well, but in Ephesians 2.19 says, we are now fellow citizens. That's right. We're not religious congregations. No. We are fellow citizens of a government. We are a class of a country. Did you know you've got class? <laughs> Look at your neighbor and tell him, you got class. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's called royalty. Amen. Royalty. Yeah. Amen. How many of you really believe that? How many of you really believe that? Raise your hand if you really believe that. You know, sometimes we have to notify ourselves, don't we? Uh, because there's no more calling yourself a numbskull because you made a mistake. Because you're insulting God. Right? Because we're not foolish virgins. <laughs> All right, so let's look at this. We are now fellow citizens. We used to be strangers and foreigners. But now we're fellow citizens with the saints and of the economy of God or the household of God. See, that's why we're saying the 10 virgin parable was about economy of wisdom built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being what? Not the chief corner stone. It's not brick and mortar. In whom? Everybody say in whom. In whom the house is fitly framed. Growing unto or managed into a habitation of God. Through the spirit. So listen. These virgins. These bridesmaids represented the house of the bridegroom. Wow. Are we good so far? I see popcorn flying everywhere. <laughs> so I know we got to be good. I got the good one. And you got coffee on too? Sorry, I was <laughs> Okay. This is from sister. Okay. Amen. Yes. All right. This is live, by the way. So we do a little business here and there. I haven't seen my, my wife all day long. And I really missed you today, honey. I really did. She's getting busy. Well. Okay. Where are we? I hear popcorn and if I'm just... Okay. So now let's go into these three areas where we talk oh, about the economy of wisdom. I forgot to say this, Doctor. These virgins, bridesmaids, represented the house of the bridegroom. Yes, they represented the house of the bridegroom. Amen. So let's look at three things that will kind of bring us into an understanding of the uh, economy of wisdom. We're going to look at misconception or measure, misuse or management and missed opportunity or manifested open door. Are you all ready? Do you have your seatbelts on? <laughs> so again, we're taking this as the economy of wisdom and talking about the 10 virgins in this parable that Jesus gave. And again, he's talking about, I want you to understand the kingdom of heaven. I want you to understand how it operates on an economy. And it's not that God wants to leave you out, but why would you want to leave you out? <laughs> because you just don't understand the economy. You know, the world's economy is nothing like the kingdom economy. Right. And boy, we're going to get into that as we, as we close tonight. But first, let's look at the misconception of five of these virgins. And then the measure of the other five. The foolish, and the word foolish there is the Greek word moros. <laughs> oh, wow. 
Do you hear any word in that? Moron. The foolish. You said moron? Moron. Yeah, morose, the Greek word. Yeah. Is defined honest, uh, evidently, obviously, I mean, as ignorant. Moron sounds like almost. Yeah, it does. That's what it means. They were ignorant virgins. Now, I want you to see this too. This, I hope this comes through clear. They were going on the credibility of being virgins. But being virgin enough was not, I should, being virgin was not enough to not follow the rest of the order. They felt entitled. Entitlement. And we see that running rampant in the churches today. A sense of entitlement because I've been here the longest. I helped found this church. And don't sit in my chair. And don't sit in my chair. Right, Pastor Warren? So, <laughs> they got their worth from entitlement. After all, we are virgins. Come on. You know? We brought some lamps. We're going to do our thing. They ought to be paying us more. I bet we're not getting paid anything. They totally misunderstood the whole event. Taking only what they needed immediately by outward perception. Do you see that? Circle that word on those two words on your page. Outward perception. They went totally by outward perception. They may have been virgins outwardly, but they were stupid inwardly. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Dr. Rick saying those mean things? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. They operated from the outside in. <coughs> Just enough oil in their lamps for themselves. Assuming the king's going to come right away. I mean, the bride's groom is going to come right away. So why should we care? So let me say that part again. They took what they needed immediately by outward perception because they had got their worth on a sense of entitlement. Do they know who we are? You know, and it takes a lot to stay like this and be who we are. So they ought to be thankful that we're with them. Taking only what they needed immediately by outward perception, they operated from the outside in. Just enough oil to get their lamps for themselves. James 3.17. Look at this. But the wisdom that is from above. From where? Above. above is, and before I read the rest of it, an inside economic process. The wisdom from above works from the inside out. The wisdom of the world works from the outside in. I got status. I got a degree. I'm brilliantly smart. Yeah, but inside you're brilliantly stupid. Because you thought all this outside stuff and status entitled you. But the economics of the kingdom, this is why a lot of people are struggling. Because they think it's coming to them from the outside in. When kingdom economics works from the inside out. Amen. The wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. All of that is inward. All of that is inward. Someone who's looking for position and status and title as giving them their worth is sick. They're spiritually sick. And somebody needs to love them enough to tell them that. You know, you're just trying to get your worth out of your title. You're spiritually sick. Not really. But you know what I'm saying. So... 
We need to understand that the wisdom that's from above is an inside economic process. So, the wise took vessels, flasks with more oil. Didn't even know if they'd need it. But they were prepared. Can I tell you 90% of kingdom economics is preparation? So, they took more oil to accomplish the why? Bigger mission. If you think your ministry is all about you, your vision is too small. And it's probably fleshly and carnal. It's not even a vision. Yeah. But it has to be something bigger than you. It's got to go beyond you. So the wise were really in this for the bridegroom. But the foolish were in it for themselves. Selfish. Yeah, selfish. So now look. Are we good? Yes, sir. Wisdom. Oh, this is so important. Wisdom is always prophetic. It's always processed. And it's always proceeding to a bigger picture. The economics, let me say it this way, the economics, the stewardship, the management of wisdom is always prophetic, always processing, and always proceeding to a bigger picture. So this is why I said last week, remember I said that if we just use wisdom for a problem, we're limiting wisdom. And probably we're just getting good knowledge or maybe a maybe a part of wisdom but wisdom is about a bigger picture it always beyond, is beyond and God's wisdom if you look through scripture see for yourself anytime it talked about the wisdom it talked about something that was beyond where they were it gave them some insight that's a good word to write down it gave them some insight for outlook It gave them some insight for outlook. Tall wisdom, right? Yeah. This is why wise may be a skill. There are some people who, who may not, how can I say this? They may be wise as far as skill. They may or may not even know God gave it to them. But they're wise as far as their skill, and they may make money, right? But they don't know it's God who, who gave them that ability. And so they might lose it at some point because they didn't know who to give glory to. So wise is a skill. But wisdom is a whole uh, dimension. dimension of character. So we, we, this is why we call it wise dominion. Wow. You know, because wisdom is so vast. What? Wise. We depend on us for wise. Yeah. It's a skill. And it's acquired. Yeah. Now you may be gifted and have some skill with it and have a degree of, of being wise. But wisdom takes character. Because it's always going to be prophetic. Uh, this is why. How many of you have experienced something like this? I, I've experienced it a lot. When I pray to God about something, he usually talks to me about something else. In fact, it's about something that hasn't even happened yet. Or something I don't even fully know yet. But what he's doing is he's giving me a snapshot. So that I can begin to work toward it. And guess what? The more I will go with that snapshot, the more he answers what I was asking him about here. Does that make sense? This is wisdom. Yeah. Amen. This is why he said get understanding. Understand what's going on here. Wow. Amen. Amen. So, wisdom is always prophetic. Always This is why um, there's scriptures that talk about wisdom in a mystery. Because, you know, we've said with, uh, mystery is going to be unfolding. Right. 
That's right. So it takes wisdom to unfold the mystery. That's right. Are we all good so far? Right. I want to make sure uh, I, I see your wheels turning. So wisdom is always prophetic, processed, and proceeding to a bigger picture. So look at this now. This is very important. Let's go from the virgins to Eve. <laughs> oh, we're talking about going back in time, huh? Eve got caught up in the deception of outward worth. Genesis 3, 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, how many of you would agree this is all outward? And the tree to be desired to make one wise. Whoa. Now, first of all, you're thinking that tree can make you wise? It says, and to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. See, she really wasn't after the fruit. She was after the tree. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Chain reaction. She got caught up in thinking a resource could be her source. But that's not the source. And could make her wise. Now notice the tree was called the tree of what? Life. Now that was the other tree. The tree of knowledge and good and evil. The tree of what? Knowledge. Knowledge. knowledge of, good of what? Of good, good and evil. evil. Notice it wasn't called the tree of wisdom. No. Mm. But it says here to be wise. It's interesting. Uh -huh. So it wasn't called the tree of wisdom. It was called the tree of knowledge, knowledge of, of good, good and evil. Knowledge. She saw it as something that could make her wise. Wow. Wow. <laughs> but only God could do that. And God was trying to do that. She was already one. But she thought knowledge could make her wise. Wow. Knowledge is not the skill. Wisdom is the wisest skill. Amen. 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 Isn't that something? So, misconception was the foolish virgins. Measure and preparation became the wise virgins. Now, let's go to misuse or management in this story of the virgins. The foolish virgins used up all their oil for sleep. Wherein the wise virgins rested knowing the night was just preparation for a continuation of their mission. Oh, come on somebody. Are you getting that? Perception is everything. They, the, the foolish just used it for a nightlight. Thinking, well, we got to wait. We got to wait on this bridegroom. I thought he'd be here by now. Let's catch some Z's. And at least stay warm with our lamps. While the wise virgins also slept, but they were prepared. Because they were not there about themselves. Now, this is why I want you to write this somewhere on your sheet. Don't misunderstand your night season. Can you say it again, Dr. Rick? Don't misunderstand your night season. We do a lot of complaining about our night season. When it seems like nothing's happening. When it seems like... We're just standing on pause or like or when things seem to be going, wrong. going wrong or we're in suspended animation, seems like. But don't misunderstand your nighttime. Because nighttime is a great time for your light. To shine bright. To shine bright. Amen. And... To know that tomorrow is bringing the rest of your mission. 
Come on, somebody. Amen. Wow. So the furly, fur, fur, furlish, <laughs> the foolish virgins <laughs> can't hardly order these things in the mail anymore. <laughs> the foolish virgins used up all their oil for sleep. Griping about the night, no doubt. When the wise virgins rested knowing the night was just preparation for the continuation of their mission. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I'm going to do verse 2, then verses 4 through 7 for time. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes, how? As a thief in the night. No, wait a second. And not to everybody, though. The coming of the Lord is as a thief in the night, but ye brethren... But ye brethren, that includes the cistern. <laughs> but ye brethren and cistern <laughs> are not in darkness. Would you all say a big amen to that? Amen. Now see, even though the wise virgins were in the nighttime, they were not of the nighttime. And that's what made a difference. Their attention was set on the next day. That's it. But he says, you are not of the darkness, are not in the darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. But you are what? All children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep, meaning be slothful, as others do. But let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. This is so important because he says, you are not of the night. No. So while the wise virgins may have slept in the night, they were not of the night. Mm -hmm. They were already prepared for the next day That's right. with their light. We're in this world, we're not of this world. Yeah. Amen? <laughs> Amen. So Proverbs, I love this. I wanted to do more on this, but you just get the idea. Proverbs 6, 6. Go to the ant. Or in other words, he's saying, consider the ant. Thou sluggard. <laughs> How do you know sometimes uh, God loves us enough not to mince words? <laughs> consider the ant, thou sluggard. <laughs> oh, every time I read that, it's so funny to me. Consider her ways and be wise. And it goes on to talk about how the ant doesn't even know. He doesn't even aware of a ruler or uh, the law, but it just simply obeys it. Yeah. Consider the ant that always prepares for the next season. The ant in these little colonies are always working together and yeah. saying, it may not be about today, but we're prepared for tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> and they don't work during the night. And they don't work during the night. Oh, wow. I did not know that. Why don't they work during the night? They, uh, I've never seen them work at night. <laughs> yeah, they are in their houses. They're what? They're in their houses at night. So in other words, they've already prepared. They've already prepared. Yeah. Did anybody tell them to do that? <laughs> you didn't go out in your yard and say, hey, you better prepare for tomorrow. You slugger? <laughs> when I was growing up, slugger was a batter. Yeah, that's true. But anyway, slugger means like a sloth. A lazy person. What's that Disney movie where the sloth just goes slow? Oh, that's Zootopia. Ah. Zootopia. Ah. Zootopia. Don't be a sloth. If you don't understand slugger. All right, so they misused their time because of lack of preparation. Again, what are we talking about tonight? The economy of wisdom. Wisdom has an economy. And a lot of people just think economy is about how much money you got in your pocket. And, services, and we're going to find out why that is not God at all. Right. So now let's go to number three, and that is missed opportunity. Oh, Lord. 
I am glad he can redeem the time. How many of you glad? I'm glad he can restore all that the canker worm and the caterpillar ate. Thank God he can do that. But you know what? I think I would prefer just not to have to miss my opportunity. So he wouldn't have to redeem it back for me. I'd just go ahead and see it when I'm supposed to have it. <laughs> Absolutely. Now let's look at this. While the foolish virgins had to go shopping for oil. And you know how they were. They probably stopped at the mall. <laughs> All the women just probably left on Facebook. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. They're still there, right? I see Paula is on. All right, good. So the foolish virgins had to go shopping for oil. In other words, they went shopping in the wrong season. Timing is everything. That's right. They missed their open door. Yeah. They, they even were so crass as to say to the bridegroom, let us in. We're virgins. <laughs> I mean, do you know our status? But he said, I don't know you. So the wise virgins had expectation to prepare in them. So they had all they needed. So wisdom, everybody say wisdom, wisdom, is the result or the fruit to navigate the process of kingdom economics. When we say, Lord, I don't have enough. He knows immediately we're missing what we do have. We have all we need because it's in here. So wisdom, the economics of wisdom is going to come from the inside out. Before it comes to you, it's got to come through you. Amen. 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 So, Psalm 104, 24. I just want to read some scriptures. Just I think if you're like me, when I read them today, my heart leapt. Scriptures are amazing. <laughs> Psalm 104, 24. Oh Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy wives. Riches. riches. Don't, how many of you want to tap those riches? They're all <coughs> inside of you. Amen. Proverbs 16, 16. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold? Oh. Mm -hmm. Now see, a foolish virgin would say, uh-uh. A girl likes gold now. <laughs> Put a ring on it and all that, you know. Uh, yeah, but you're misunderstanding the whole thing. Why is wisdom better than gold? Because wisdom produces from the inside out. That's right. Gold is just gold. Right. And knowledge, the knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his... Oh, I missed the one. Uh, better than gold and to get understanding rather than uh, to be chosen than silver. So Romans 11.33. Oh, the depth of the riches... Both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments. In other words, how past our current knowledge are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Now, on the side of your sheet there, I want you to see just an example because... When we get into the Constitution, if we do the Constitution of the Kingdom for our next series, I'm going to talk to you about economics a little bit more and to see how we, this will kind of give you a teaser, okay? Because what you see on the side of your sheet there is, first of all, the world's economic system. Yeah. Or we could say the five foolish virgins. Of the economic system. Yeah. The world will say, money is your worth. In fact, what do they say about millionaires? How much do they worth? Yeah. <laughs> they say money is the root of all evil, but that's not true. The love of it. It's the love of money. That's right. So the world will say money is your worth. I don't know. Do I leave a link there so you can say that, uh, write that? I can say it again, Doctor. Money is worth. This is what the world will say. Yep, absolutely. And when you have money, they'll say you have wealth. 
and they think of wealth as being <coughs> stuff. stuff. He's got a lot of stuff. He's wealthy. He's better off. He's better than he needs. Then the world says, if you're wealthy, you're rich, meaning you have accounts. And then the world says, if you're rich, then you're treasured. Or in other words, you'll have fame. You'll have everything you need. There's a lot of miserable millionaires. Absolutely. Billionaires. And the more that people lift them up mm -hmm. and promote it, and that's what, you know, you can see on Facebook, the richest man is this, and then, oh, he went to second place. Oh, no, somebody. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 mm -hmm. no. And it, that's, that's what the world does. And the more that they get famous or, you know. Yeah. The, the world the say, oh, because we... People keep giving them praise. Yeah. And it's the world system. In other words, what you could say is what you see here about the world's economic system is it's backwards. And one word describes this whole system, and that's debt. So the five foolish versions were saying, you're indebted to us because we need your oil. We don't have enough because we didn't plan. So let's look at the kingdom's process of e economy that is from the standpoint of wisdom. Are you ready? Oh, this will bless you. In the kingdom, even though the world says money is first, in the kingdom, treasure is first. You don't have treasure down here? I think you read Romans 11, 33 already, Dr. No, right here. No, oh, okay. yes, we're on the side. Oops, I didn't, I just well, it's so it. tiny. <laughs> I mean, you got your magnifying glasses on. Oh, that's what you said, the mind. Yeah, yeah. 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 Was, Do you yeah. see that on the side now? Yeah, I got it now. Okay, so let's look at the process of kingdom economy, in other words, wisdom. So instead of starting with money like the world does, the kingdom starts with treasure. And treasure is purpose. The who. Yes. The who. Purpose, you could even call it, if you can write it somewhere, inner reserves. Potential. This means we haven't fully even tapped into the vault of purpose yet. It's an inner reserve. So treasure to the kingdom is in you. It's called purpose. Potential. Yeah. In fact, this is the principal thing. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah, absolutely. In other words, this isn't later on down the road after you no. have money. No. This is the beginning. Right now. So he says, this is when you're in the process of wisdom in kingdom economy. Treasure starts it off in purpose or in a reserves. Treasure then produces riches. In the kingdom, riches are knowledge. Something the foolish versions lacked. Wisdom and knowledge. Riches are knowledge. You might write, write down also, they are your strength. <clears throat> wow. Amen. So now we've got, it begins first with treasure, the purpose inside of you God designed you for. Inner reserves that haven't even been tapped yet. But then riches come that are knowledge <coughs> or strength. You know what I also like to call it is the earnest down payment. No. Riches are your earnest down payment from treasure. So God gives you enough of what you need for today. Oh, yes, he does. So you can set your tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Then, see, this is a process. Everybody say process. 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 So this isn't just a list. This is a process of kingdom economy. We'll get into more of this in the Constitution. But riches then produce your wealth. And so far, we haven't even got out in, outside of you. We're still inside you. So wealth is wisdom. In other words, wisdom becomes the application of the knowledge. You have a treasure in your earthen vessels called purpose. Yes. It is an earnest down payment called knowledge. 
and it produces wealth, the wisdom that applies it. Application of knowledge. Now, wealth is not stuff. Mm -mm. Wealth is relationships. Yes. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. Ideas. Innovations, plans, plans. But here's the key: when you get to wealth, just now, it's wealth because it's ready for transfer. Transition. Wealth is not wealth until it's transferred. So wealth doesn't come to you; wealth comes through you. Yeah. From the inside and out. From the inside out. Is the inside and out. Amen? Absolutely. Because you talk about gold, saying wisdom is better. That's it. From the inside out, which is the result. This is the kingdom process of wisdom. Powerful. This is what the wise virgins practiced. Amen. And then it produces money. <laughs> what is money? Money is not where it starts. Nope. Money is simply stewardship. That's right. I like that money is called currency yes. because it has a current. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And how many of you know it's, it flows, it has a current to wealth and not wealth in stuff, but wealth in you. So whenever you're ready to do more with what's in you than just pay the rent. Amen. Yeah, I think I'd able to pay the rent too. But now it's not just about you and about your oil and your lamp. Amen? Amen. But it's about the bridegroom. Amen. It's about saying, wait a second. It's about more than just me. So now what's coming through me is a transfer into someone else. In order, you don't, you don't own it. That's it. So money... The reason why money, there was a saying in a, a few years ago, I don't know if it's still going, money cometh to me. Well, that's fine, but you know, we were always saying, money cometh to me. Yeah. Well, how come it's not cometh in yet? You know, it needs to cometh. But it's not going to cometh to you if you don't know how wealthy you are. Because it's not coming to you because you don't have, it's coming to you because you present transfer. By decreeing and declaring by faith. Yeah. Amen. A whole other story of faith Amen. Does that make sense to everybody? You explain it in a different way, but it's, it's, <laughs> good. it's just great. It's good. So Powerful. we think someone's wealthy because look at all they got a Maserati, they got all this and they got all that. You know, they may have a lot of stuff, but they may be empty inside. Oh, yeah. Because true wealth, the, the kingdom process that came through the wise virgins that we saw is treasure, purpose, riches that produce knowledge, wealth that is ideas, relationships, it's wisdom for transfer. And then it draws a currency of money, but no longer is money the source. It's a resource. That's right. The love of money is when we make it the source. But money should be a resource. Because now it is aiding you in the treasure and the wealth and the riches inside of you. So when you begin to step forward and say, I may or may not have everything it looks like I've got uh, to need to get done what God says. But in the process of time, I'm taking plenty of oil. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I'm taking a lamp that's ready to go beyond today yeah. and serve the bridegroom. Yeah. Because I'm going to be the one that gets to go in and shut the door. Yeah, amen. Wow, wow, wow. So we're going to have a round table here. Now, don't forget, we also have class next week um, in week number seven of this course, of this seven-week course. And I'm going to go back and read. Thank you so much, Paula Marzi, and thank you for all of you that came on. Please share this even after it's recorded and posted. And uh, we're going to have a new course coming up soon, but we will have class next week for week number seven and the test. And I can't think of anything else except we love you so much. What do we say? To the, to the king. king.